uh, in humanities area. Okay, continue. Um, you know, just seeing that just really brought tears to my eyes because I really, really do, um, I guess it's my personality. I just like having that personal eye to eye touch or whatever. It's really, really important to me. So I just want to welcome you to this chat and chew. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot. Maybe you're chewing at home. Uh, usually I have some pizza, some other things for you to kind of uh, lure you in. But, um, you know, I just really wanted to let you know how much we're thinking about you praying that everything is going well with your family and also with yourself. Uh, I know this is not what you signed up for this semester. Uh, it's not what I signed up for my first year as president, but you know, we all, um, it was not anything that any of us expected. So I really, really, truly appreciate uh, just your spirit of positivity of making this work. I have all of the vice presidents and some other staff members on here as well. And we're gonna answer your questions. Uh, please know that we are evolving even as we speak. We're still waiting on different instructions. We don't know when the state will be opened back up. We don't know when they'll allow us to open up as far as our ed institutions. All that's still kind of up in the air. So we're planning for a lot of different scenarios. So I just initially just wanna say welcome. Uh, you know, we have a couple hours to spend with you today, this afternoon. Uh, I'll give all the VPs an opportunity to give an update, but why don't we uh, let Driana uh, give her welcome, and then after that, I want to talk about a really important resource that we just started this Monday, and I have a couple people online that can share to you students how important this resource is. So I'm going to hand it over to our SGA president. So hi, everyone. Um, I don't have too much to say. I just want to say thank you for coming and thank you for having me. That's really it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So Terrence, I'm going to, uh, before we get into any other, other specifics, I really want to introduce Lisa St. Hilaire, who is our Interim Director of the Career Services Department. Um, she's going to talk a little bit about uh, a, a new resource uh, that students have. It's called Handshake. Uh, and it's really, I'll let her explain it because I don't want to talk about it a lot. I had it at my previous institution. And we want you students to, op to optimize using this resource because it will have a great impact on you being able to get a job in your portfolio. So yes, Lisa, please. can you jump in? And I do. Just give me one second. I'm having a little. Your mic's off, Lisa. Give me one second. I have, I'm having a little difficulty. Give me one moment. I apologize. It's okay. Um, here we go. Okay, here we go. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, awesome. So first of all, I do want to say I'm very excited to be participating in our first virtual town hall um, and chat and chew. So thank you. And I also want to say that the Center for Career Development team is really, truly excited to introduce to you Handshake, which will be your new resource towards your career success during your years here at Bloomfield College and long after you graduate. Um, Terrence does have a quick video that he will be showing you that will give you the benefits um, of, Bloom of Handshake and what it has to offer to our Bloomfield College community. Terrence? One second. Lisa, just do a little more intro on it while I bring sure. up the video. Sure, not a problem. So um, while Terrence looks for um, our video, I do want to say that I want to thank two very important people because without these two people, this would not be such a success. Um, this launch would not be possible without the hard work and dedication of Ed, Ed Evans and Andrew Gersmeyer and his team. They have truly worked diligently for months, meeting every week behind the scenes, putting everything together to make this success for our students, our faculty, and our staff. And Andrew is on the line, so I think he may want to say a few things. Thanks a lot, Lisa. Yeah, I'm Andrew Gersmeyer. If you guys, uh, some of the students on the on the uh, attending the meeting. Haven't heard my name before. Essentially, uh, any any online system you guys use, uh, where you see your own information in it, whether it's uh, WebAdvisor or Self Service or Starfish or anything around campus, um, that all comes from one 
major system on on campus and I manage the team that makes sure that that system uh, works mostly every day and we try not to do things to it unless you guys are asleep yeah, overnight. Right. so um, uh, we were talking. involved in just making sure that anyone registered this semester Andrew. Uh, has a profile in uh, handshake and it's uh, gonna be very easy to get to once they show you uh, what it looks like you'll log in exactly the same way that you currently log in to uh, any of your other BC resources that's the, including the my Bloomfield portal um, any computers on campus email, uh, everything else. Uh, it's a single sign on nature, which means same username and password that you use for all other Bloomfield systems. And that's basically uh, my role on this. And uh, I can't thank Ed and Lisa enough for, for making thank this. Thank you so much, Andrew. Easily Terrence, one of the is the video ready or best should product. I go on to something else? We're ready. All right. I'll start it over. It's a pretty short video. This is the new Handshake profile. This is what it used to look like before. Now you can upload a shiny profile pic to show off your best smile. Get suggestions on how to fill out a job entry, fill out an extracurricular, so you don't have to creep on other people's resumes as you're filling out your profile. Logos accompany each job and organization entry. Just type it in and we'll do the rest. Oh, and did we forget to mention, there are now 80,000 companies recruiting on Handshake, including 93% of the Fortune 500. So give our new profile a shot and give yourself a shot at getting hired with Handshake. Lisa. I think she dropped off for some reason. I'm not really sure. Okay, and Dr. Lammy had uh, to reset his computer because there was a frozen um, issue, but she also has some additional slides. So we can either wait for her to come on or you can give additional remarks and then I'll bring up her first slide. Sure, you can go ahead and bring up her slide too. We have Andrew and Ed on the line. Uh, both of them I know help facilitate that. And I wanna uh, give a shout out to my husband uh, again for all the work that he did on that uh, for free. Well, not really, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Lisa, we were bringing up the slides for you um, to kind of move on to the next part of what Handshake can do for our students. Did I see her pop back on? We lost connection there, so I apologize for that. I got disconnected. But nonetheless, this part of the slide is once you're, I want to just stress the importance of creating your profile. I cannot stress that enough because by you creating your profile, you're allowing employers, both locally and nationally, to see your interests, see your major, and reach out to you in terms of your job opportunities and internships. And what this slide is, is an actual, is your actual dashboard. Here with, with a simple click of a button, you can access employers, you can access your um, job opportunities. One thing that I really like about this um, particular dashboard is that you have access to the community, uh, search your community. And you, by you searching your community, you can gain and interact with a Bloomfield College alumni and also, other um, students across the country, as well as um, locally from different colleges and universities. And you can see their interests and join their organizations and see what that's about. You can also do a single sign-on click by looking at current events. And that's not just events that are part of Bloomfield College community, but if you wanna participate, let's say you're a criminal justice major and you wanted to see if there was a criminal justice event, by you searching your local town or neighboring town, you can see different events that are available um, throughout, the, throughout the state of New Jersey that you can participate in and register for. Um, lastly, what I love about um, is easy access to our career development team, where you can reach out to our career services team, email us directly from your dashboard. And um, edit, excuse me, um, Terrence, if you can show the other slide, if you don't mind. And that slide is, which is key, um, every employer that posts a job onto Handshake um, does the posting date and will it, when it will expire. So what's key about this, on your dashboard, you'll easily see when 
the jobs that you um, show interest in expire and how quickly you have time to meet the deadline to apply. And all of this is, is on your single sign-on on your dashboard once you log in. And lastly, what I want to talk about or right before we end, um, I like to call it handshake on the go. So it, with your smartphone, you can simply download um, through your Apple Store or your Google Play handshake and you can access all these features that you have on your desktop or your laptop by your phone. Just simply make sure that your profile is complete and your resume is uploaded and you can apply for jobs, join events and so forth. And I encourage you to activate your account because as I said, I don't know if you got to hear that portion of it, but we sent out the email for 1,405 students. And so far 75 have um, registered and activated their account counting. So please make sure that you do your profile, you set it up. You can easily meet with me via Zoom by appointment. I'll walk you through that and anything else that's related to your career services needs. Thank you so much for listening. If I can say a thank you to everyone that helped us get this going. It's just like Lisa said, we sent that email out Monday morning around 7.30 and so far we've had 800 kids open the email and 75 actually activate their handshake account. Uh, Matt and Amy in the marketing area, Drianna and her team were always helpful. Uh, it's just so many people while we were in, installing handshake that we had to meet with and get approvals from and get their ideas that I want to thank everyone who had input into this. And I just want to say thank you very much. So at this Thank time, thanks, Lisa. At this time, Dr. Evans, if it's okay with you, we'll move on to the vice president. Yeah, for sure. But I do want to do a quick follow up on that, though. And the reason why this is so important, you know, uh, someone was talking. I was talking to someone earlier about all the pictures behind me uh, of my babies on the wall, uh, and I had to kind of shift my desk around because some kids were getting uh, more airplay than others. Uh, you know, the ultimate goal for students of a parent is you graduating and also you're getting a job in the area in which you got your degree in. And using this resource, Handshake, will help you do this. Uh, I have seen numerous students from our previous institutions that uh, got jobs because of their participation. So at Bloomfield College, we wanna make sure that you have the top-notch experience uh, in using career services and not waiting until your last semester right before you graduate, but start thinking about it beforehand. And using the Career Services Office is so critically important because we don't want you to, again to get to the last semester and realize, oh my God, I spent all this time and money and this is not the job that I thought it was going to be because of an internship or practicum experience. So make sure again that if you haven't registered yet, that you please register right away uh, because this is a resource for you to again, to be able to get that job and the job that you want to have and also know the salaries and all the things that go along with that by participating in Handshake and also going to our Career Services Office. So again, thank you to uh, all of you that have made this happen. Uh, I've heard the good, the bad, and the ugly as we were getting it together and we finally got it together uh, and it's launched for the students. So I, I really appreciate that. Okay, so Terrence, we can move on to now uh, giving some brief updates from all of the vice presidents and fielding any questions. I'm trying to do that within the chat and also within the Q&A area. And so um, we'll start with our vice president for enrollment management, Mr. Kevin Cavanaugh. Thanks, Terrence, and hello, everyone. And uh, just to piggyback on what Dr. Evans just said, you can't get that job or you can't get that degree. And, uh, you can't get on Handshake until you register for classes. So uh, one of the big things that uh, we're all working on on campus right now is ensuring that our continuing students uh, get themselves registered for the fall if they haven't done so already. The registrar's office, your advisors, uh, they're all there to help you uh, get, get registered. The folks in the fi financial aid office are there to help you if you have any kind of uh, uh, issues with the FAFSA form that you need to get completed. Um, and I know uh, the folks over in REH are, are around to help students that need to get uh, into the housing selection for next semester too. So uh, we've gone a long way as a, a college to remove a lot of the barriers that typically hold students up from registering, uh, releasing 
a lot of the financial holds, releasing a lot of the immunization holds. We're really at a time when there's a lot of disruption in your lives. We're, we're really trying to uh, clear the runway to allow you to register for classes. So uh, please do so and please encourage your classmates uh, to do so. A um, lot of excitement in uh, my area as it relates to uh, incoming students. Uh, if any of you recall uh, your senior year of high school, uh, May 1st is a big date uh, for students to be uh, selecting where they're going to school. Obviously, it's a lot different this year. Uh, a lot of schools have moved to June 1. A lot of schools, uh, a lot of students are uh, at home and not in their high school. So it's really thrown things off a little bit. But uh, we had a great accepted students day virtually for the first time on Saturday. Uh, and we had a, a good number of students uh, participate in that. Uh, the storyteller ambassadors, I know some of them are uh, on this chat right now, but they're doing virtual tours uh, with folks. The admissions counselors are you know, working with high schools, giving virtual information sessions. Uh, and so we're really excited about the, uh, the momentum. It's been a great year. Obviously, the, the current crisis has uh, thrown a, a wrench in a lot of things, but it has for a lot of schools. So uh, we're, we're no different. Um, so uh, we're really uh, hopeful that we all get back and healthy. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have bringing a great class of uh, new students, freshmen and transfers from the community colleges and have all of you back as well. So, you know, please register and please fill out your FAFSAs and uh, we'll see you sooner rather than later. And now our Vice President for Institutional Advancement, Ms. Sarah Lax. Hello, everyone. Um, happy to be here today. Uh, it's, uh, I've only been here at Bloomfield since March 16th, but the community has been amazing. Um, you know, I look forward to meeting students. I've only met a handful since, you know, campus shut down. So I really look forward to uh, seeing you soon. Um, but, but most of you don't know probably what institutional advancement is. So first of all, let me just explain what that is, is our area actually um, focuses on philanthropy and raising money for the institution. Uh, we also work on building um, alumni connections. So the Alumni Association runs through our office and we also um, head up the communications uh, for the college. So those are the kind of three areas that we're working on. Um, something that we just did, uh, we had our second annual giving day, which is to raise general scholarship funds for students. And we actually raised over $42,000 in one day with 156 donors, which is incredible. It's 10,000 more than last year. So we're here to support you. We're here to support the students. Um, also, you know, uh, they talked about handshake and um, making connections with alum. It's so important, um, making connections. And as you navigate here at, at Bloomfield as a student and, and work into your careers, it's important that you make those connections. And our office is happy to make connections with alumni with you. It's so important. So um, I look forward to meeting all of you. Um, again, our goal is to raise as much money to support this institution as possible. And um, if you have any questions, uh, happy to answer once, once everything's over. Thank you, Vice President. And now we'll go on to our Vice President for Finance and Administration, Mr. Bill McDonald. Is Bill still there? There you go, Tommy. Yeah, there you go, Bill. Terrence, I like your back screen, deep. Thank you very much, it's our new logo. <laughs> there you go. Um, what I wanna go over real quick is just, again, from what directors and the President's Council review last week was a memo really that Mark Marquita sent out on Friday. Uh, if you haven't seen it, look for your, your, your email, it was at 353. It just has nine key points that we wanna really address. Uh, Kev, uh, Kevin did touch on it, but this is a, a quick guide to go through. One, summer classes. Uh, we encourage everybody to take summer classes. Most students, um, if you enroll in two summer classes, you usually get Pell for the most part. They'll pay for one, then you have to pay for the second one yourself. This year, what we're doing is, if you enroll in two classes, if you're Pell or if you pay for one, you're still gonna get a scholarship for the second class. Um, so if you're not sure, talk to financial aid, uh, but we do encourage students to take the classes. We do want to keep you on track so you can graduate on time. Um, second thing uh, is um, financial aid adjustments or room refunds, uh, parking adjustments. Um, 
There are students that were residential students this term that did have to leave um, before the semester ended. Uh, we are providing uh, room and board adjustments. Uh, those are being processed through student financial services. Uh, email has already gone out. That process will be completed by May 15th. Again, if you have any questions, you, you can certainly go on the frequently asked questions, but also SFS uh, will be happy to help you. Um, parking passes as well. Anybody that has a parking pass, we made adjustments for those and they will be posted to your account as well. Understand the hardship that everybody's going through right now financially. Um, uh, tuition pay plans. Um, again, we're, we're uh, deferring all pay plans right now until June 30th. We'll evaluate that and see what we're able to do going into the fall as well. Uh, we do want to make it as uh, easy as possible uh, to move from this spring term into the next academic year. So again, the folks in student financial services are here to work with you and help you in whatever we're able to do. Um, tech, technology, again, there were some students that did need tech, not tech, technology for the spring. We did provide Chromebooks. Um, if you're taking summer classes and you still need some hardware, please call the help desk. Again, on the frequently asked quest, uh, questions, there are ways to connect with them. If you borrowed um, some Chromebooks, again, if you talk to the help desk, uh, they'll walk you through that process to either return the books or if you want to purchase the books. Um, Ke uh, uh, Kevin Tat touched on fall, reg fall registration. Very important that you start reg registering now. Um, in the past, there's been financial holds. Uh, for the most part, we've, we've lifted most holds to make this process as easy as possible that we can for you. Um, we also encourage you to fill out the FAFSA form. The date was extended from April 15th to June 1. But again, it's important that you, you file your FAFSAs now and don't wait to the end because very often you're unable to find your password. And if you try to log in too many times, you will be blocked. And if it happens close to June 1st, uh, that could cause a, uh, a, a problem in uh, completing your FAFSA form. Uh, the other um, big topic right now in the news, and we're working very quick, uh, quick, uh, quickly as we can, is the CARE Act funds, the relief funds that are going to go directly to the students. We're waiting for guidance from the, go the, go the government. These are funds that are going to go directly to currently enrolled students. We don't have all of the information yet. There will be more information that we'll be sh sharing with all the students in the next month or so. Um, and those are my updates. Thank you, Bill. And so who do we have? We have Peter on. So we'll go to our, our vice president for, I'm sorry, for global programs and professional studies, Mr. Peter Wong. Peter, your mic is still muted. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Peter Zhang. Uh, we, uh, my office is located in Two Broad Street, uh, down the street, but next year we're going to come back to campus. Uh, what I do is uh, three things uh, in major nutshell. Uh, I do uh, all global affairs uh, things so that we can bring uh, international students to the campus. Uh, last 20 years, we brought uh, thousands of international students on campus so that they can learn uh, and mingle with our students and uh, in a good time in the United States. Uh, also, uh, we have about 350 university partnership around the world and in more than 32 countries. And uh, since President Evans came uh, last year, she signed about six uh, MOUs with other three different countries already. So all universities overseas, they are interested in sending their students to us. And also they like to invite our students to study in their campus, in their countries. So I'm trying to uh, advertise that program more and more uh, next year, next semester. And the second thing what I do is uh, I do uh, offer courses through the online and the corporations and the workforce development programs, uh, many different uh, area so that people who need uh, new skills and new technology and new knowledge they want, we provide them so that they can uh, advance their uh, skills so that they can get better jobs or uh, you know, get promotions and so on. 
And third thing is uh, we are working with many corporations in New York, New Jersey area so that people coming from overseas can do uh, workplace uh, practicums and visitations and uh, the uh, knowing about the United States and so that they can go to uh, their companies and the hospitals and the schools. And also the, uh, we are providing a lot of the uh, uh, activities, weekend and weekday activities in Washington DC and New York and Philadelphia and Boston and Niagara Falls, bunch of place so that international students can come to our school. Uh, they learn the academic stuff plus they get American cultural experience as well. So I like to get engaged with uh, uh, the, our CLC office so that we can uh, mingle together. So you can, our students can have global experience while our students here from overseas. So that could be a good mingling and learning each other, helping each other. Maybe you can pick up Chinese language, you know, some Korean language and they can pick up American language. So that's what we are trying to do on campus, uh, some joint uh, adventures and weekend, evening, and whatever things available on campus. So that could be a good uh, advantage for you to uh, uh, enjoy with them. And also uh, we like to uh, engage with student affairs and more and more so that we can have some cultural, uh, international uh, activities together so that you know our students can broaden their global experience. Uh, even they cannot go out right away, but uh, while their international students are here, they can get some experience each other. So that's what I do uh, daily here. And hopefully we can bring back to our office on campus next year, then we're gonna do more actively engage with our student population on campus. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President. We look forward to uh, further discussion about collaboration. We definitely do our serve program, our service learning opportunities. We'd like to explore those options. So we appreciate that offer. Uh, before we get into academic affairs and, and, and student affairs, I see that we have IT. President Evans, would you like us to uh, have the IT help desk address? Nikki, would you, would you mind? No, not at all. So um, we understand there's a lot of technology needs that have changed. We are here to support you in any way we can. Um, on Mondays for staff and faculty, we have a, a special session every week. On Wednesdays, starting with summer one, we are going to open have an open student uh, question and answer session. We also may have one at night as well because we know not all students can attend one for during the day so that you can come on. It will be an open session that's available for an hour and 30 minutes. You can come in and ask any question you'd like. We're here to support you any way we can. We also understand that some people don't have the, technolo the technology they need for at home. So we are providing everything on a case by case basis. So if you do need technology for summer one, please send an email to helpdesk at bloomfield.edu with just your name your ID number and what your major is, and we'll do our best to give you whatever resources we can. Thank you, Nikki. And then I'd like to go to our vice, interim vice president for academic affairs, uh, Ms. Maureen Grant. I'll take you off uh, mute. There you go. Oh, okay. Hi, everybody. Hi, students. So nice to see you, and I wish I could see you, but it's nice to be in touch with you. Uh, first of all, I just want to congratulate you students for the amazing job you did on making this conversion, getting online, and uh, carrying out and being able to work well under difficult circumstances, a lot of challenges, a lot of things that you weren't entirely prepared for, and um, you know, you've been remarkable your resilience and your commitment and your perseverance. Uh, uh, I know um, it's a big adjustment and you've had a lot of things. A lot of people have gone through a lot of anxiety and making the switch, but um, you've been successful and uh, your perseverance and your hard work will pay off. Um, and speaking about going online, uh, let me just remind you 
that we have uh, revised the grading policy to try and alleviate some of the pressure that you're under. Uh, I think that you know the grading policy, but I'll just remind you, and you can look on the uh, FAQs online, but uh, you do not have to make that decision as to whether or not you want to switch to a pass-fail or what we're calling pass-low-pass or unsatisfactory. You don't have to make that decision until your grades are actually posted on May 13th. At that point, you can decide if you want to convert a letter grade to a pass, low pass, or unsatisfactory. Uh, and if you do choose to do that, that grade is no longer counted into your GPA. So that's the reason you might do that, assuming you don't need the grade for your GPA or to go on to, uh, if you pass the course, it counts just the same as a prereq and it, it meets all the requirements. If you get a low pass, which is a C minus or less, uh, it may or may not meet the requirement of your major, but will be accepted in, uh, as a pass. So just to bring you up to date and remind you about that. Um, also, I want to reiterate some of the things that you've heard, our summer classes Right now, we're looking at summer one and summer two as most likely online. Summer one is definitely online. Most likely, summer two will be online. But you have the opportunity to have a two-for-one sale and get an extra class. So that's, that's, a, that's a great chance, a great opportunity. Uh, I know many of you are asking about the fall. And just like none of us knows exactly what the next, uh, what the next step is going to be or the next evolution of this uh, situation that we're under. So what we're telling our faculty is uh, prepare for face-to-face -face teaching in the fall, but at the same time, be prepared to go online. So prepare your classes to be re ready to switch to online. Uh, so that we're, we're, uh, we are not taken uh, by surprise and that we've done a lot of planning. Uh, if we do have to go online in the fall, we're going to use, and whether, wh whether or not we have to go online or in the fall, we're going to use this summer to uh, strengthen our infrastructure, uh, to increase our, our faculty and staff development, their skills, and to work with students who need some extra help. As you just heard from IT, there will be uh, resources available to you and will be prepared should that be the direction that we have to go. Um, yes, you, uh, Vice President Cavanaugh mentioned registration uh, and you'll be getting calls. If you haven't registered yet, we are calling you to remind you, uh, it's really uh, simple to do. You can do it online as you have done uh, up till now. And we stand by and are ready and eager to help you with that. Um, I think those are the main things that I need to communicate to you right now. Uh, I just want you to, to uh, congratulate yourselves on the amazing flexibility that you've shown and your willingness to work with this situation. And um, you are an inspiration to all of your teachers and to all the staff. Terrence, Thank you. Terrence, before we go on and uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Grant uh, goes off, uh, this is actually her last week. We have the title of interim on there and I know she, uh, she's ready to, I don't know if she's ready to move on and I know, I know she's really, thoroughly enjoyed this year. But I wanted to publicly thank her again, especially with the students here online, of the work that she's done, specifically in academic affairs and for the college as a whole. Uh, Thursday will be her last day serving in the interim role, and we will have a new VP of academic affairs starting on May 1, uh, Dr. Michael Palladino. So again, Dr. Grant, thank you so much for everything that you've done on behalf of the students and the faculty and staff and the whole community. Um, I'm gonna tell you I love you. I really appreciate you saying yes and not running from me. So uh, thanks again. 
Well, I'm not running from the college either, so you're not, you're not rid of me yet, <laughs> no matter what you think. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Evans, and, and thank you again, uh, Vice President Grant. We really appreciate it, and thank you for your leadership. We would like to move on to the, the uh, Student Affairs Division, and presenting first is Dr. Patrick Lammy. I like this big view of myself on here, so I'm going to go back so I can see everybody <laughs> uh, on my screen. Um, the first thing I want to say is I miss our students. The campus is way too quiet. I'm in my office right now. There's one car in the parking lot, and um, and I miss I miss the noise of spring. I miss the quad. I miss the music. I miss all of you being here. And I actually even miss the parties that sometimes give us a little bit of heartache to deal with. But I miss that too. Uh, the place is way too quiet, and um, I'm not. I'm going to be very brief because I want to hear more of your Q and A's, and I see some of them popping in. I'm working on all of you returning to campus. That's what's important to me right now. So we're planning, we're charging forward with fall housing, um, with summer housing. Um, although we may end up online uh, next semester, um, we're hoping not to. We want to be here. We want to have all the resources available for you. We're also planning a commencement. I hope some of you are seniors on the line. We're having a virtual commencement on May 21st. There's a big town hall tomorrow. What time is it? At 1 o'clock, I believe, mm -hmm. tomorrow um, from 1 to 2.30. If you should receive the email from Dr. Evans and myself inviting you to that, we want to talk to you about what we're planning to do in a virtual way for commencement 2020, which does not replace commencement 2020 that we're going to do at a later date, either in August or in December this year. Um, but we want to do something for our seniors. Our seniors are going to get a beautiful gift from us. I'm not going to tell you everything that's in it. I want it to surprise you. And you all should have your cap and gowns already. If you don't order them during the virtual commencement, we're going to try to find a way for you to pop in and do a snapshot of yourself with your cap and gown on. So you're going to be able to flash in. Um, so there's a lot of exciting things that we're doing on that particular front. Um, all of our services remain available from counseling to career development. You heard from Lisa earlier today to our EOF program to health services. All the things you need as resources on campus remain available. The college is absolutely not closed. Student Affairs is open. I pick up my phone every day. <laughs> I'm here taking calls from you, from your parents. And so I'm curious to hear how you're doing, what your concerns are, what your fears are, what's on your mind, what's in your heart. What are the things you want to hear from us on that end in terms of how we're going to remain committed to making sure you have everything you need to be successful on this campus during this trying time. We're all dealing with it in the ways that we can, but rest assured that this institution got your back. So we're here. I'm going to turn over to Dean Mitchell. I think that's a great segue and, and hello to everyone, to all you amazing uh, student leaders uh, and just students in general and all of you who are excited about getting your uh, degree come this May. Uh, Dr. Lamy said he wanted to know what's in your heart. And so I hope that you can see this, but I wore my special necklace today for all of you because you really are the heart, you're the soul of our institution. Uh, without you, there is no us. And so you make um, Bloomfield College uh, such a village of support. And we will do any and everything humanly possible to help you. And I echo Dr. Lamy again. We really miss your voices. Um, I'm in my office and normally on a day like today with the sunshine, my window would be open. So I would be able to hear your laughter I would be able to probably hear some of your conversations. Uh, you guys would be coming into our office right now, uh, talking with us, letting us know what's going on. And so our hearts are uh, missing something. And that's something that we're missing. We're missing you. And we hope that you're missing us just as much. And so I just want to uh, really motivate, inspire, and let all of you know that this too shall pass. I know that it's a rough time right now. I'm, I'm on email with many of you. Um, I've Zoomed with some of you. 
Um, I continue to invite you to reach out via email. Uh, I invite all of you to let's do a, a Zoom conversation as well. Some of you have even called me. Uh, I've given out my home number uh, because sometimes you just want to talk via phone as well. So whatever your needs are, just continue to let us know what those needs are and we will do everything humanly possible to accommodate you. But don't give up. That is my message to all of you today. Just don't ever give up because your victory is near. And for all of you um, May 2020 graduates, uh, I wanna show you something because I am um, Bloomfield College alumni too. And so you're working really hard to get this. And so um, just reach out to us and we just want to be a part of your success. And we are so grateful that you gave us an opportunity to help you to write your own stories, uh, May graduates. And for all of you that will continue your education, we will forever be here to help you to write your story of amazing success. Thank you, Dean Mitchell. I would like to bring up student uh, government candidate, um, one of our student government candidates, Dayla Griffin, who would like to pose the first question to the panel. Is that okay, Dr. Evans? Yes, most definitely. You're off mute, Michaela. Oh, hello, everyone. Hello, Michaela. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. How are you guys? All right, so um, my name is Michaela Griffith, and I'm running for Vice President of Organizational Affairs, and I'm also going to be a sophomore next semester. So I have two questions. My first question is for, like, basically to represent all, all the athletes. So if school is, like, remotely online, will we be able to get the um, scholarships that we've earned? Let me respond to that. <clears throat> At this point, we're not taking away any student scholarship. Whatever you earn, you're going to keep. Um, let's hope that you're able to compete next year because the NCAA has not made that decision. They're actually remaining very quiet right now nationwide. Um, so most students in your situation do not know whether or not they're going to compete in any athletic programs as of yet, particularly those who, or who start in the fall. Are you in a, you're a, you're a track student, aren't you? Okay. What sport are you, what's, what program are you in? Yes, I am. Track and field? Yes, track and field. Yes. So you may be on the other side of that because NCAA assumes that we'll be back to spring sports for certain, but uncertain about the fall, if that makes sense. And I will add too that the okay. NCAA uh, extended the eligibility for those students that had uh, their spring uh, sidelined that they'll get an extra um, year or semester as far as eligibility for that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was aware of that. Okay. And um, my second question is because I'm a FWS student worker too. So I wanted to ask if, again, if school is still remotely online, then will we still be able to provide notes? Because as of right now, we have to go based on like what the what the other professors of the students who are taking notes for um what the professors provide on the blackboard or if they have their own video sessions so will we still be able to do that as well so i don't know who can answer that particular question bill can you answer there will be work study uh next academic year 2021 so we will can continue what we're doing this year in next year as well. Now exactly how it would all work out. We actually have a task force and you're providing notes or doing different things along those lines to support your peers. Uh, just stay tuned. We're going to make it work some kind of way using technology if we have to. But we're hoping that we'll do some of that based on okay. next year's hybrid. So, okay? So, any other questions? From all right. Thank you, Michaela. Thank you so much. Have a great day, guys, and stay safe. Bye. Right. Any other questions from anyone?
Terrence, you're on mute, Terrence. Terrence, you're on mute. Terrence, we have another mute. question. Thank you. I'm sorry about that, guys. We have another question from student um, Destiny, who's also a student government candidate for this year. So we're going to bring Destiny on and allow her to ask her question directly. Destiny Rogers, uh, everyone. He's also a candidate for Vice President of Organizational Affairs. Destiny, you've been promoted to panelist. You just accept it. And when you're ready, you can just come on live. Am I on here? Yes, ma'am. Oh. How are you? <laughs> Hi, everybody. I look crazy. I'm sorry. I'm doing homework. <laughs> but um, my question is, if we're having a problem with uh, a professor not being, like, understanding during these troubling times, is there someone we could, like, email or speak to directly? I'll, I'll, I'll take that one. Uh, this is uh, Maureen Grant, who's academic VP. Um, first of all, I assume that you have reached out to this professor. And, yes. And you're still not getting the kind of response that you're looking for. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now, secondly, would you know who this professor's chairperson is? Or is that not? Available. No, I don't know. Yeah, all right. Uh, so then the next best thing to do is really to reach out to my office. Okay. And, uh, and notify um, my office. When I'm saying my office, I'm, I'm using that term because I'll be gone after Friday. So, okay. New, but, but, but there is somebody in my office who is working particularly with students who are having problems. Uh, and uh, anyway, um, I, I'm trying to think what's the best way I can send you her email. It's Miss Tony Furman. You probably, um, I don't know that you're going to remember this, but. Okay, oh, yeah, I can write it down on my computer. But we can actually type it and put it in the chat. Oh yeah, that'll be better. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. I, I'll type it in and put it in the chat. And you reach out to her and she will then make sure that you both, um, that she gets to the, to the head of the department and that, that she, she will get to the instructor as well. Because I'm very sorry to hear that this is happening. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know why this person isn't being responsive. Uh, uh, some of the faculty are as anxious about all of this as the students, but that's no excuse. Um, but we'll 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 get on it the minute we get word from you. Okay, so okay. I'm, I'm put in the chat now uh, her, her, how you can reach her, and uh, and you go ahead and reach her. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. I also have one more question. Um, sure. Because like now that we're not on campus, like usually I just go to the departments like if I have like an issue, but now like these the emails are kind of like confusing me because I don't know who to email for what. Um, one of I'm a work study student and one of my checks never came in the mail, and I didn't know who to email about that neither. Which department? Is Bill uh, still on the line? Yes, um, you can email um, Michelle Strum. She's the coordinator of student employment. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you can't get in touch with her, you can also email Elaine Jackson Blue. She's in charge of payroll. Okay. And oh, yeah, that's the, the email I look for. Okay. And between the two of them, somebody will get back to you. Okay, thank you. And while you're there, Destiny, um, and students who are listening, <clears throat> we also have the frequently asked questions on the um, COVID link on our website. So there's a lot of information there that students can actually um, retrieve in terms of how to access different offices and people. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't think Chris Applegate, who has commented a few times, necessarily wants to ask a question, but he just wants to say that he thinks all of you are amazing and thanks, thanks you for this, uh, for engaging. Um, thank you, Chris. 
let's see. I don't see Ding Lammy. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, Evavio or address that um, out loud? I did also get an email from the help desk inquiring about us following up on that. So the update from CSLE is just simply that we're working on it, but we needed to allow time for you know, the faculty had to come online with distant uh, teaching, the students are doing distant learning. And so we just didn't want to be a bother to help desk and we need them in, in, in order to complete the process. But myself and, and, and Dean Mitchell have been on standby and we're just waiting. So um, again, unless Dean Lammy wants to add more, we will be proceeding with the Evavio app. I think um, that's, and that's exactly correct, Terrence. I think the only clarification and I think Dr. Evans resolved it on the chat on the chat room was that Involvio is not replacing Handshake. Those are two separate tools. One is focused on career career, career preparation exclusively and, and in that space. And the other is really focusing on student engagement. How are we going to connect students with students on an ongoing basis? I mean, we're doing a lot of things virtually now. So we're learning as all of you are learning. As you learn remotely, we're learning how to engage you. And um, we feel that Involvio is going to add to that element. And we also, I should also share with some of the students who are here, as we're observing the level of participation in some of our online virtual engagements, which now exceeds well over a thousand student participants, um, Involvio is going to be another tool that we're going to use because we're going to continue to engage all of you online as well. We want you back here in person, but we see two spaces because our commuters are equally engaged as our residents. So we're going to take the this this time, which is a challenging time, but it's always an opportunity in every challenge to see what we can do better and involve you is gonna to add to that. If there are no, oh, let me see, we have three more inquiries. Okay, uh, so we'll bring on uh, Kiara Patterson, who loves to be called, prefers to be called K, everyone on the panel, <laughs> just a heads up. Um, we'll bring her on and she has a question. Kay represents the CSLE office, but she's also a student government uh, uh, representative as well, uh, holding the role of treasurer and secretary. Kay, you have been promoted to panelists. Just accept and when you're ready, you can come on live. I'm sorry. I was saying you're ready. Did you want to ask your question live? Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> President Evans wants to see you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know I'm being special, K. <laughs> well, I don't know how to do it. What am I looking at? You turn your camera on, K. It's a little video down uh, to the left where it says stop video, start video. Oh, okay. I don't know if I'm being seen or not. Yes, you are. Now I we am, see okay. you. Because mm -hmm. I can't see me, but um, <laughs> <laughs> the question I had, because I have a lot of questions, though, that's how I was trying to be considerate and wait for other people to ask questions. But the question, which obviously I know not now, it's going to be addressed right away, but like later down in the um, plans for the college, the former bookstore, mm -hmm. is that being transformed like into something Gourmet Dining has planned to make a new like Starbucks or like Dunkin' Donuts, or is that being something else for the college? No, actually we're looking at some plans that we had to unfortunately put on pause related to COVID-19 of what we're gonna do with that space. And it was to extend the dining services uh, options for students on campus. Uh, that we were gonna pre be presenting and kind of moving forward with that. Uh, right now, we don't know when that's going to happen. Uh, we were hoping to get some work done this summer and bring some more exciting dining opportunities on. I think Michael was on the call earlier. I don't know if he stepped off or not. Um, I don't know if he wants to share anything with that related to uh, just some possibilities we're looking at. But we were looking at possibly Dunkin' Donuts, uh, things that you know I'm finding in New Jersey that you all love your Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what about Krispy Kreme? But anyway, uh, so you know, we are looking at some different options for that space. Uh, we'll just have to see how it all plays out. Okay, and I have another question. Sure. Is that right if I can ask another question? It's yeah. your time. <laughs> um, Go for it. So uh, my next question was, I don't know if this, like which department would this refer to when it comes to majors? 
But the cat building, um, the major for expanded media, mm -hmm. which is like kind of essential to like, you know, film and photography. I, I was wondering like, is there a way to like eventually like split that into them becoming their own individual majors rather so than just pinning everything together? Cause I feel so, and I spoke to the head of expanded media as well. She doesn't really listen, but, and <laughs> about it. And I just didn't, I think, cause that major, cause that's my major. And I feel like on certain aspects, it focused more on photography and people that are not, who are in that major, don't necessarily like, not saying photography is bad or anything like that, but want to focus more on the film side. I feel like the courses don't offer a lot for film on that aspect. So Dr. Grant, I think is gonna take that one. Yeah. So um, I, I'm sorry, your name isn't up here, but tell me your name again. Kay. Kay. I'm sorry? Kay. Okay, I don't know why it's not coming up. I still have destiny up here. So um, this is a great, uh, great kind of feedback. Um, and, you know, Dr. Uh, we call him Dr. Professor Y. Professor Ishisawa? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So Y and I have talked a lot about the organization of that major. Uh, and uh, I also have honestly heard there's some problems in expanded media. And I'm... Um, mm -hmm working with those problems. Um, but your suggestion uh, is the kind of thing that we, we would welcome and want to look at. Um, I would like to make sure that I relay that to, um, uh, to Uchiro, because he's in charge of that whole area, the whole cat major. Uh, and also um, make sure that um, uh, that that he is that he connects back with you on this, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and also, uh, please, uh, re please let us try to work through these problems because uh, I, I've heard other students say that they would like to see more in film, and I'm not sure how much the the course itself is directed by the person who happens to be teaching it or whether it's the way that the curriculum is set up. But um, thank you for the suggestion. And it's one that we will definitely look further into. And when you have those kind of suggestions, uh, please don't hesitate to contact academic affairs again, because that's where we're able to work closely with the chairs and communicate these ideas. Okay, thank you. I have Hi, another Kate. question, but I'll let it go. Yeah, I can go on. You're online. You might as well go ahead and get them out. Okay. Uh, this is my last question. In regards to the student center, when it comes to the, not the lower level, but not like the lower level where the um, student government offices are, mm -hmm. um, when it comes to um, expanding, um, would be like the possibility of, I don't know, like creating like the nook area where the vending machines are and like the computers. Mm -hmm. I know a little bit Terrence was talking about that may be relocated to being like the um the center where students come to check out games and rent stuff being that replaced. But I was thinking like instead of the um I believe college hall, I think that might be a set apart from the cab building, the only building where you can go on the computers that like enough time and like maybe print over there rather so than downstairs. Cause I know that's been an issue with a lot of students that wanting to be able to print and have to go to the library, college hall and necessarily uh, CSLE, we don't typically offer students like the Russian and print all at once at the same time. So would that be something that will fall under CSLE or? The I don't mind. I don't mind uh, taking uh, answering that, if you will. Um, I know that Terrence and I and Dr. Lamy are constantly in communication. And um, the, the question that you're asking now is definitely a question that uh, I heard before early this semester. So just looking at um, how can we best utilize our spaces uh, in this student center is something that Terrence and I and the CSLE team will be looking at. 
especially uh, adding some printers for printing capability for student government as well as students in general, because we know that uh, the student center in Talbot is the hub of student interaction. So that's definitely something that I can talk with uh, Dr. Lamy and Terrence about in terms of meeting that particular need as well as other needs for students in terms of how to best utilize the spaces that are there. Okay, thank you. All right, I'm done. Hi, hi Kay, this is Mike Goldstein Blankard with Dining Services. Can you hear me okay? Oh, hi Mike, yes. Hi, hi. I just wanted to weigh in uh, and uh, piggyback off of Dr. Evans and as she alluded, we're, um, we're at a standstill now, unfortunately. We were slated uh, to break ground, hopefully this summer, uh, and we had some really great ideas to expand dining services and really bring all the students into uh, a new age of dining where we can offer amazing made-to-order stations. Uh, we've looked at how popular the walk station is and the expo station. So we were looking at bringing in hibachi stations and home kitchens and then expanding the retail location um, to have different sections and different um, stations that is more than just the area um, and, and set it up in a lounge type setting. So it can be uh, a one-stop shop to come eat, socialize, study, enjoy. Um, we were going to modernize everything and really offer some really great um, stations and, and, and new opportunities for the students. That being said, um, because of what we're experiencing now, uh, everything is on hold. We don't have any uh, specific dates, unfortunately, that I can offer as to when we think we can start moving forward on this. Um, just know that we uh, are, are eyes on the prize. We have an amazing vision. Uh, and I'm excited when we're able to move forward, what we're gonna be able to produce and, and to be able to provide to the students. And, um, and I think you'll be happy to. So if, if you'd like some more information, I can share with you some renderings. I can talk you through some of our new ideas. I'd love to get some of your um, ideas, your vantage points. Uh, I'm always reaching out and asking students, what is it that you're looking for? What is it that's missing um, that you'd like to see moving forward? So if you want to reach out to me, I would love to sit down with you uh, remotely and, and go through all that if you're interested. Okay. And Michael, we might want to do that too with this whole student government, just to have an opportunity to see some of the things that we're talking about. And um, also in the future, I want to see your video. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair, fair enough. Uh, and I would, I would love to do that. I would, I would love to do that. Uh, two things, Mike, could you just stay there, stand by for a second? But I want to get back to Lisa, why Kay is still there. Lisa, you also have a resource, which you're talking to a student government leader. She can help spread the word. We got about four more days or so of, 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 of um, getting to utilize our student government leadership uh, to help spread the message of what we're, what we're doing. Yes, yeah, so when we get back and up and running and we're on campus, our computer lab at the Center for Career Development goes on, is underutilized. We have four computers, a printer. Um, I encourage students that when they do stop in to see me and get the consultation on revising their resume, that they just immediately go downstairs and use that computer lab. So if you find that you, um, other places, do not have the capability of, or it's, it's the too far of a distance, you're more than welcome, spread the word. We have four active computers and a printer that'll print just for you. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. One last, one last thing, sorry, Kay. Um, yeah. You had brought up uh, an interest in having a computer uh, or some computers or an area, designated area. Um, we were thinking the exact same thing and, and during these expansions, uh, mm -hmm. we were looking into having a gaming room for students not only to participate in, in virtual gaming and that type of thing or esports, um, but for your own personal use. Um, even before that happens though, we have already started the process of bringing in a um, one computer, one printer uh, and an access portal for students in the lounge of the dining hall uh, as it stands right now. So at least you'll have an option once you come into the dining hall, um, even before any of the new renovations start. Um, while you sit, lounge, eat, you'll have access to a computer as well. 
would that be open to commuters as well? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Kay. Um, Mike, I wanted you to talk a little bit about your Write Your Own Recipe series and what the students can look forward to. Absolutely. Um, I was graciously joined by Terrence um, and um, Keisha this weekend. They joined me uh, over the weekend and we filmed a really fun spot uh, on um, a cooking tutorial that we did uh, for the students both those are that, that are here on campus and those are at home, um, to put it out there to show, show them um, that there are fun, easy um, ways to, to cook while you're at home. And we've uh, asked them to reproduce that, um, that same dish that we, we made. And uh, Terrence and I turned it into a little competition and my chef was there to kind of walk us through and there was some banter. And it was a lot of fun. And we asked the students to reproduce that dish, uh, send it back to us. We'll, we'll, we'll um, judge the plating, the technique, uh, and then we'll send out a $50 gift card to Grubhub uh, to the winning student. And we'll announce that over uh, finals week. So that, um, that just kicked off the series, but we'd really like to start a new, um, whether, whether we're Doing this remotely or not, this is a really great opportunity to start a web series um, that showcases uh, fun dishes, easy dishes that uh, we can make in the dorms, at home, at the dining hall. Uh, and it's an opportunity to, um, to talk and discuss. And then as an out, offshoot of that, rather, uh, I'd like to start a new series called uh, Now We Feast where I would be showcasing prominent um, uh, people on the campus, everywhere from uh, maintenance to the president, to the deans, to food service, to uh, admissions. Um, and basically it's just a forum and a platform to sit down and uh, while we're eating, um, talk about things that we generally don't talk about um, to humanize, humanize us. Um, and ask kind of off the beaten path questions, um, more personal questions to showcase who we are uh, and to give the students a little bit more of an idea of, of, um, uh, of our backgrounds and our personal lives. So uh, I'd like to get that started um, uh, as soon as finals end and it's gonna be something that we're gonna uh, publish and put out for the students over the summer. You know, Michael, I want to add to that, too. I know you're doing it for the students, but I think some of the faculty and staff would be interested as well to kind of get them engaged in a lot of different ways. And I will say from a cultural perspective, um, you know, I've talked to you about this, too, for just health disparities and making sure that we eat healthy. But a lot of wonderful conversations happen over food. And so uh, happy times and sad times is always kind of my family feed it with give her something to eat. She'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm, looking forward I'm to so glad you brought I'm so glad you brought that up because it's a great segue into promoting uh, something Keisha was her brainchild and in, in calling uh, culture wars where it's exactly that where uh, we'll discuss how to prepare food and what um, what we were taught growing up and what our families did and to have a dialogue and to be able to discuss what we know and what uh, makes sense to us and hopefully be open-minded to, to other people's culture too. So I'm really glad you brought that up and that's something also that we're looking forward to putting out to the students in, in uh, our community. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm looking forward to it. I had to learn that there's more than Tony Catchery seasoning to put on everything from breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, <laughs> thanks. Right. Thank you guys, thank you. So two questions and we'll prepare to close out. Um, Lisa, just give me a wink if you want to mention your webinar next week, because I am going to mention the one tomorrow. Sure. Okay. So <laughs> we'll close out with a, a few announcements with that. This question is probably a bill answer, because it has something to do with money. It's going to cost. And <laughs> this it falls in the backyard of Ding Lammy and Ding Mitchell. I think Dr. Evans will be excited about it. But the student wants to know, uh, can they start a garden? Uh, uh, can, when can they, are they going to be able to get a community garden? And when do you think we'll be able to start? 
Yeah, can I jump in on this one right quick? I think I respond to it. Chris. I'm uh, really excited about the community garden concept. Uh, of course, we don't know what's going to happen as far as the gover uh, governor's mandate when they're gonna open up the campus again, we'll have access to have people back on campus. So that pretty much will dictate it. I think we had already kind of located a space for the community garden and we were looking at some additional expansions related to that. Uh, so I know Pat wants to jump in on that. Uh, so I think that came out of student affairs. I responded to Chris as well, <laughs> privately. So uh, <laughs> with the same information. Uh, my, my response was when we reopen, we, we can definitely start that in the summer. Um, you know, Dr. Evans and I talked about some different ideas, how to make it more lively so that it's not just the garden, but it's a space where people want to go sit, have a coffee, kind of change it around a little bit. And of course, Keisha has been involved because she's a master gardener. Most of you do not know that. <laughs> and so she'll be helping with that and helping Chris to kind of really create that space into a space where people want to go have lunch and hang out. And it's also going to be a space where when school is in session, we're going to talk about produce. And it, it's a lot of opportunity with a community garden to serve many purposes. One, whether or not we can grow spices for the cafeteria. Two, having a space that's really a, a, a sense of peaceful space on campus, adding that element as well. I just chime in on that too. Um, and and uh, hello, Chris, because I know we've had uh, conversations about the garden and Years ago, we used to have an, an organization through student government, um, and that was Green Hearts, if I'm not mistaken. And it was a great um, uh, student program where uh, wonderful students took, took lead on creating that community garden. And it, it's definitely something that we can all show, also share the produce with our community, uh, especially those in need. And uh, it's really interesting we're talking about this as perhaps one of the last questions because I just planted some things, some, some spices and, and vegetables uh, in my pots on my deck. So if you don't know, uh, I am from Virginia and a true farm girl. So I would love to be a part of that community garden when we're back on campus. Um, so first of all, thank you guys for multitasking and helping to answer some of the questions. So. Um, <laughs> That's very impressive, actually. <laughs> the um, student participating in the disc competition, Mike, they want to know, uh, can any student participate? Any and all students. We, we would love to, to get this out to all of the students far and wide. Uh, and any, any student um, at Bloomfield College is welcome to participate. Perfect. Um, so tomorrow, we will have... I think we have two more webinars that we're sponsoring, well, actually three more that we're sponsoring, sponsoring so far from CSLE between now and the end of the semester. Uh, tomorrow's will be replacing our weekly podcast. Uh, we're gonna continue to podcast in the fall, hopefully have some great guests to interview, including some of the, uh, um, our administrators that are on the screen now. Uh, tomorrow's webinar will be hosted by Rita, who is our program coordinator in CSLE. And uh, that starts at seven o'clock. So Narita has invited in a nurse who actually was, um, uh, who had the coronavirus and made it through. And so she's gonna share her story, but then we also get that piece of what it's like to deal with um, the medical side of it. Uh, and so if you're interested in that, uh, you'll get an email about that, or you can reach out to Narita directly. Um, I'll, I'll obviously be sending the, the link out as I always do uh, for it. So hopefully you can join. That'll be at seven o'clock tomorrow. And then on uh, Lisa, we have yours next week with State. Yes, so Nareda has reached out to the Center for Career Development and on May 7th at 2 p.m. We are doing a live webinar with a nonprofit organization. During this time, it's important to give back. So one of our guest employers will be New Jersey Care. Um, we will be talking about uh, volunteering and the benefits of volunteering, especially during this pandemic, as well as some internship opportunities, um, both remotely, um, as well as planning for the fall and um, late summer. We're excited about that, both Nareda and I. So the last webinar will be, uh, I think it's May 5th, is National Asthma Day. And so we partner with the Green Water Action which is a national um, environmental justice agency out of, uh, they have an office in Montclair, South Jersey. We'll be conducting a webinar with them if you have an interest in that um, topic. 
or if you want to learn more about it, you may have children or family members that suffer with asthma like uh, I do. Um, it's a serious issue, particularly in urban areas due to environmental hazards that we have. So that's a lot of what we will cover on that particular day. Are there any final remarks from any of our vice presidents? President Evans, we can uh, close with you. Yes, definitely. Again, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Um, these are not just words. And when I say I miss you and I love seeing you, uh, so please continue to email me. I continue to do my little videos during the week with the help of Sarah and other staff members uh, because we want to try to make sure that we're connected uh, in a lot of different ways. So please stay well, be safe. Uh, we'll be praying for you. And uh, we're wrapping up the end of the semester. Finish strong. Uh, I'm learning the whole New Jersey strong piece. Uh, we're, we're just wishing you the best. Thank you. Thank you guys for tuning Thank in you. and participating. See some of you tomorrow during the commencement of uh, webinar. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.